Hey, what's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hagshot and thank you for joining us for our top five favorite guns of all time, uh, at least up until this point here in 2021. We've never done a video like this and I thought it'd be really cool to lay out my top five favorite, Miss Hagshot's top five favorite, and give you an idea of what we really, really like. And uh, our lists are pretty different, but uh, I think it'll be kind of cool so you can get an idea of what, what I really like, what she really likes. And then as a wild card, I'll do uh, my favorite carry gun uh, up until this point. Things always change as we get more guns and things like that. Uh, then, you know, hey, maybe we'll do a list like this every single year. I don't know. But I've never done a list uh, like this up until this point because I really wanted to get a good variety on the channel here. We got more rifles we're doing. And I enjoy shooting rifles, but I really enjoy shooting rifles now because we actually have a range three, four, five, and 600 yards, which really allows us to stretch the legs on these rifles and really get a good idea of what they're capable of. Um, I always kind of felt like the rifle reviews we've done in the past have been cheated because we only had like 80 to 100 yards. Now that's not the case. So anyway, so one really cool thing that I want to show you here really quick is from Tipton. So uh, we work with Codwell um, and Tipton and Wheeler and all of these kind of companies, which are really awesome. And I got this gun vise from them. And basically I'm able to take this gun vise, take the, um, take the leveling system from Wheeler and actually get my scope mounts and everything perfectly right on the money. So I'm gonna leave a link to that gun vise and to the different Wheeler tools and Codwell and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can check them out. And any new time customers uh, to their websites, you can actually save 10% by using the code HAG8710 at checkout, which is really awesome. And just a disclaimer, they do not sell firearms or ammunition. So there you go, there's our disclaimer there. Really awesome companies though, and super helpful, especially doing our uh, rifle reviews here. So let's, uh, this should be pretty fun. Tell you our top five favorite guns, no particular order here. Um, I'm actually gonna start right here in front of me. This is actually the first rifle I believe we ever did on the channel. This is the X95. And I, I'm a fan of the AR platform. But I like something that's different. It just, it's a personal thing with me. And I think the bullpup design gives you uh, a really overall short, compact package while still having a 16 inch barrel and all of that good stuff. But the X95 in general, particularly is really cool because of some of the features that it gives you with the option of having the rails all the way around, or you can cover those rails with the little panels that it actually comes with integrated flip up sight straight from the factory and the front one actually has tritium in the uh, front there um, of course it has like a standard a2 style bird cage on the end there so it actually has ambidextrous uh, magazine release and once you get used to this like up here it is kind of like an ar as far as your selector switch or safety and fire switch um, kind of like an ar and then of course you have your magazine release that's kind of like an ar it's just a matter of getting used to that right there where the action is now back here but it does a really good job of keeping that weight very well balanced so with an ar all right if you have weaker dexterity or whatever the case may be you have all your weight out here right here i have all this weight here so it's really propped up against my shoulder so it feels really good really in a lot of situations this is ideal because i can keep this really nice and tucked in um, if you're clearing a house or, or if you're using this gun for home defense, the overall size is super compact, but again, you don't lose any velocity or anything like that. So it's a really awesome design. I love the X95 and it's one of my favorites for a reason. And still to this day, absolutely love that gun. So the very first day that we saw this, Mrs. Hegshot just brought something up kind of funny. So we were actually at a friend's house, his land was pretty wide open. It was actually mm. really nicely, you know, set up. So we had one shoot steel target 100 yards away. It was the hottest day we've ever shot on in our lives. And what made it super hot is we had no cover whatsoever. We had Ugh. one tree like maybe 60 yards away from the target, which is what we eventually went to. Mm -hmm. But what she was saying is every time she sees this gun, she thinks about that day where it's over 100 degrees and we were sick we for were hours. Sick. Actually, the truck I had at the time had very terrible AC. I don't oh. even know if it had any AC. But, man, it was hot. We were so sick to our stomachs. But 
Um, yeah, fortunately, it, it did ruin our impression of the gun. It was just a super hot day, so I thought that was kind of a funny <laughs> little story to throw in there. It was bad. Yeah. So the next one I'm going to go to is one we haven't reviewed yet. I'm working on the review, and I, I was hesitant to put this gun in here because I haven't spent a lot of time with it, but man, I'm in love with this thing already, and it's the SCAR 17S. And there's just something really, really special about this gun, guys. And I, I'm not going to be the first one to ever say this. I'm not the first one to ever do a review on this gun, obviously. I wanted something chambered in 308. I don't have a 308, so I thought it would be a really good balance to our personal collection and adding that. I'm not somebody that thinks, hey, I have you know, more 556 than anything else. So I have to have 556. I like to diversify my stuff. That's, that's just me. Mm -hmm. But the SCAR represents one of the lightest 308s that you can get, obviously with SOCOM and all these other kinds of things. It's super iconic. And I just, I love it from the overall uh, multi-colored FDE that it offers to the company FN, which I think is really awesome. They're made right here in Columbia, South Carolina, which is really cool. Um, this rifle just represents liberty and just awesomeness. And, um, of course it has a reciprocating bolt, which, you know, takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not bad at all. If you keep your hand in the right spot, super powerful and just really nice to shoot. Yeah. It's got some, got some sand and stuff on it from our last range trip, but, uh, pretty soft shooting as well in the 308 telescoping and um, adjustable cheek rest right here and of course you can um, adjust your six position stock here in the rear and pretty much everything it came with from the factory i was pretty happy with besides the uh, grip here i did a little bit of modification to get that uh, particular grip on there but overall man this gun is just awesome and i am excited to review this one and bring this to the table definitely the most expensive gun in our collection up to this point but man it it's an amazing gun so the review is coming very soon on that one it quickly became one of my top five favorite guns right out of the gate pretty much the next one i'm going to bring here is one uh again the review is not out yet <laughs> um so you know it may seem like man yeah you you know you got these new guns so of course they're your favorite right now but that's not the case, man. When I look at these things, I'm looking at them in terms of what I personally really like. And this one took the place of the Grand and the M1 Carbine. So I, I, I do have a little bit of experience here with this stuff, but this one is just special to me. This is the Car 98K. This one in particular is a Mauser 1941 edition. And I, I love history. I love World War II specifically. And I love World War II guns. The only problem is, is that we got into this game very late. Maybe a lot of people don't know that we do World War II style reviews. Maybe a lot of people, I, I really doubt that there's not that many people that are into this. But what I'm trying to get at is these reviews for us don't get a lot of views, unfortunately. But I love this stuff. So you will continue to see these types <laughs> of videos on the channel because I love it. Sometimes we have to do... What you enjoy. Uh, what you enjoy. And I mean, I, I like them all, but sometimes it's nice to have a break from the latest and greatest polymer wonder. You know, it re just really mm -hmm. is. So this one, though, I really like this one, not only because of the history, but I love the action of it, the bolt action and working that and, you know, doing the stripper clips and the satisfaction this gun gives you. And it reminds you, um, this is a man's gun. Sorry. It beat the heck out of me whenever we were at the range. It really beat me up. Um, you got a little love mark from it right there in the nose. Got a little too close on it. Um, it it's I still kind of have a little. Yeah, a little I mean, it bruised my whole, f the whole front of my face. Yeah, yeah. This gun yeah. will beat you up. But it is super satisfying to hit shots at 300 yards with the iron sights that with was an 80-year-old rifle. Yep. So. I love the action. I love the safety. I love how smooth this gun is. The only time I really noticed that it started to bind up it at all was at the end of the day after we had shot 80, 90 rounds out of it up until that point. Uh, and in one day out of a rifle like this, not only is that pretty dang good, but that's expensive. <laughs> um, but when I started firing super quick, I would notice it wouldn't get stuck on open. It was actually getting a little bit stuck on close just a little bit but 
other than that, I mean, it's pretty dang smooth for an 80-year-old rifle. I love the history and everything about it. And um, for the most part, this gun is actually all matching. The the Again, I can't wait to do the review. But the stamping and stuff on the uh, receiver, it, it's, it's in really great condition. So that's one of my absolute favorites as well, the, uh, the Mauser K98K there. Let's go to a couple of pistols, and this was the first World War II gun that we ever did on the channel, actually. This is the Walther P38. This one, again, is a, this one actually is a Walther. So they used codes back then, you know, BYF, and this one is actually AC, which is the Walther plant. So you had Walther, Mauser, and Spreework is who made the P38. So those codes, basically what the Germans, the idea was is, hey, if the Allies capture these guns, they didn't want the Allies to know where, the, where they were making the firearms to make it easier for the Allies to actually bomb those places. But this gun is really cool. So it inspired the Beretta M9A3 down there on the uh, very end uh, with the locking block and the wedge design that it actually uses. <clears throat> but what makes this one really special is the fact that it's actually chambered in 9x19. So you can find the ammo most of the time mm -hmm. in normal situations. And it's such a soft shooting gun. All right. You have no tritium, no night sights, no contrast really, or not great contrast anyways. But it's such an awesome shooting gun. I mean, soft shooting and just absolutely incredible. Feels good in the hand. It's pretty heavy, but it soaks up the recoil really nicely. And I just love the Walther P38. It's such a great gun. Of course, it's super different in the heel style magazine release. But I don't look at this anymore today as like a combat gun. I look at it more as a collectible type of shooter. So I'm not really concerned that it doesn't have the standard magazine release, you know, or button style release or anything like that. I just think it's really cool. It shoots really good. And this is an amazing pistol. And I'm super happy to have that one in the collection. Let's go to the last pistol here. And this one is the SP5. Um, hopefully soon to be an SBR version of the SP5 because this one definitely deserves that and having a real stock on it. So I'll have to go through some paperwork and things like that, but it is what it is. Eventually I would like to put uh, some kind of optic on here, although I don't mind the traditional style sights that it actually comes with, 230 round mags. And this just is such an iconic gun. To me, I absolutely love it. It's probably my favorite braced pistol design, if you will. Um, super expensive, unfortunately, but man, these things are great. They're made on the same line in Germany as the real MP5, and it is super quality. I love the action of it. All right, so a lot of people are fans of AR styles and, you know, things like that, and all that's pretty cool. But me, I just like something a little bit different, and the SP5 is just super iconic, and I absolutely love the way this gun shoots. Super soft shooting. Uh, very old school when you compare it to some of the other offerings today, but still a really nice gun. The SP5 there. Now the wild card here, favorite carry gun so far, is still the P365. No matter if it's in the traditional version or the XL, which is what this is right here, which gives you a little bit better trigger, two more rounds in the mag, and of course the option to go ahead and put that red dot on there, which I put the, uh, the Romeo Zero on here. Tritium night sights and just in my opinion the best overall carry gun right now on the market with the best capacity it, It's just the most comfortable and I absolutely love this gun. So that's my top five list top six if you will uh, Right now currently in 2021. Let's get these guns off the table and give miss Heckshot a chance to show her top five All right, you guys I'm gonna go ahead and just um, quickly go over my top five really fast so um if you guys have been here for a while, you know um, I really enjoy the Sig Legion. It's probably my my top favorite gun of all time. Just because of how easy it is to shoot, you don't really, say you're a sucky shooter, you could be the perfect shooter with this gun. It's so fun to shoot. It's smooth. You know how I am about grips. The grip is really... Um, Subtle. Yeah, but it's kind of coarse, but then it's not. It's got the night sights that I really enjoy. The trigger is amazing on this gun. It's just, every time we go out, I just really love to shoot that gun. Okay, so she she said that if you're a sucky shooter, 
this gun makes you look good. And there's there is some truth to that because the trigger is so good. The trigger it. is really, really, really good. This is like to me, especially in single action, uh, this is a gun you could really train somebody on and and boost their confidence, uh, especially with a pistol. Because yeah. it's it's got good size, it's got good weight. Um, great sights and an amazing trigger. And I, I personally love the coloration. This isn't my top five, but I'll go ahead and throw that out there. It's so so there is some truth to that. It was kind of funny the way she said it. Um, <laughs> it's but, true. But yeah, I mean, you know, you, you have to know what you're doing, obviously. Right. But yeah, this is, a, this is definitely a, a really good one for sure as far as a pistol. I love it. So my, I'm just saying in, in order, I guess, for me, so the closest thing to the Legion that I like the best would be the Walther P38. Okay. Now... I think this is the only one that we really kind of agree on uniformly, by the way. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it shoots like butter. There's like no effort in it at all. The trigger is crisp. It's clean. And surprisingly for it being as old as it is... Everything about it is just so smooth and easy. The grip is amazing. And I'm surprised they still don't do things like this with the grip. It was, I love it. The recoil is very minimal. Yeah, so one thing that I really love about World War II guns specifically is that you're on the leading edge. You're on the beginning edge of modern technology. So this gun, in, 19, in the 19... 30s this gun was developed right so all the way through the 40s and then once the Bundeswehr which was the new German army came along in the 50s they relabeled this gun as the P1 at that point so you have a gun from the 30s with this type of locking block and this wedge design mm -hmm. that the Beretta the Italians started using in the 80s with our gun the U.S. Army's gun in the 80s, in 1985, is when this design came along. So that's how cool World War II guns are to me. So you have like the Sturmgewehr, the very first widely accepted and used assault rifle. You have guns that are on the leading edge, the beginning edge of modern technology. They're not quite there, but they're almost there. And that's what I think is really cool um, about World War II guns specifically. And the P-38, it is like she said, it's just absolutely amazing mm. shooter. It is. If I could take those two guns to a shooting trip every time, yeah, I'd be a happy girl. Yeah. Um, I would guess my third would be the Copperhead. So the biggest thing I like about this gun, especially with me, like it's hard to shoot sometimes those you know larger rifles. The thing I really like about this gun is because it. It's very small, it's compact, the controls are really easy to get to, and again, it's just fun. When I go shooting, I want it to be fun. So, the Copperhead to me, it's a little bit too short, it's a little bit too small. And I was gonna ask you, you don't have any rifles out here, so... Now, when we're shooting rifles off of the bench with something like that, I mean, obviously, it seems like you're having a good time. Right. But you would much rather shoot the pistols on the range like that, I guess. You, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean... Or, it, or smaller, compact rifles, okay. per se. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, these are considered pistols, but... Right. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You you would just rather shoot... Hey, that's that's fine. We've done a lot more pistols than we have rifles, too, so I definitely get that. Um, the KP9, what do you really like about this one? I really, really like this gun a lot as well, surprisingly. So, I don't know what we're going to get when we get it. When he gets a gun... You know, I'm along for the ride. So, to me, I, I'm different when it comes to Headshot. Like, he looks at every aspect of a gun, and, and you know, that's understandable, but I don't. When I'm shooting, I'm, I'm not looking at that like he does. I'm looking at, you know, what I enjoy about it. It Does it hurt to shoot? Is it enjoyable? What kind of features do I get out of it that I enjoy? And with this gun, I liked the fact that... Of course there's recoil to all these guns but just like with the copperhead it was effortless and it was fun and you just felt like you you know you could conquer anything when you shot this gun you know the features were really great i like the slide serrations or the cutouts they had on the side really like the paddle style release on on a lot of the guns that we've done i really prefer that a lot yeah 
Well, it's easy to get to, too. You don't have to worry about reaching for a button. So right. I guess, you know, smaller hands and things like that, that makes it super, super convenient. I like the AK controls to it. I like how they kind of, you know, made the dust cover and things like that, um, you know, spring loaded so it stays on here. And I think that's one of the cool things about our channel because you get my perspective where I'm looking at more of the technicalities and, and, and things like that, where she's looking from a purely um, consumer point. Like when I shoot this gun, yeah, I, I, you know, she wants to know, is it, is it comfortable? Is it fun? When I'm looking at, you know, the different features and, and how they've incorporated into it, I love the fact that this is based off the Vityaz, which is the Russian submachine gun. She could really care less about that. I think that's really cool because they got it super close to the Vityaz as, as, as much as they could, as far as I know. Um, so that, that's the different thing that you obviously, which is hopefully why you're here and hopefully <laughs> why you're subscribed to the channel, you get the different points of view that we're going to uh, we're going to give you because I will consume myself with some of this stuff. For Miss Techshot, she just wants to know: Is it fun? You know, does it work? And you know, <laughs> is it comfortable? You know, basically. So basically. that's what you get. I think it's a really good list. I, I I think as we get more into rifle shooting, I think that maybe you'll you'll incorporate those maybe in the future. Maybe you won't. Um, I, I enjoy the rifles, man, because it's really satisfying to hit steel at three and 400 yards, um, or beyond. And I, to me, I'm really, I've really drawn to that because that we've done so many pistols in the past. I feel like I'm a pretty dang good pistol shot. I feel like she is as well. Uh, but we've done so many of those. It's been really nice to do something totally different. And I grew up shooting rifles, you know, that's what I grew up shooting never steal or never three and 400 yards out, never, not even close. To me, that's a heck of a lot more, it's, it's more appealing to do that because we haven't done it as much, but I still think that's really, really cool to be able to hit something that far away, to know that you've zeroed the rifle, you've done your part on the trigger, kept a steady hand to be able to get that one shot you know, that far away. I think that's really cool. So I think as we do more of that, maybe she will change her mind and maybe rifles will become something more uh, that, that she's used to. And I think, you know, also shooting from the bench and stuff obviously helps. You know, if you have to hold an eight or 10 pound rifle all the time, um, that may not be enjoyable for you all the time. Uh -uh. I know when we added that recoil pad to the Mauser, that things like that will make a big difference. Um, yeah. a lot of that stuff's learning curve and, you know, just realizing, Hey, I can't get that close thing because where these guns that she kind of showed off are very minimal recoil, very easy to shoot. Mm. Some of the guns that we're going to do in the future and some of the ones that we're doing now are not that easy and you don't want to get that close up on things like that. But, uh, um, you know, it was definitely a learning experience there and we'll continue to learn and continue to share what we know and love here to you all. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.